In this video, I'm going to show you how to control the DJI NASA flight controller with a PPM output from an easy UHF using just one wire from the UHF into the NASA control unit. For this, we're using a Turner G9XR, and I'll also show you how to set that up. The main idea it is is really just to save on clutter. I mean, we've got just two wires here. We've got one giving the PPM output from the receiver, and that's going into the NASA. And then I've got one here which is just controlling the front mount gimbal on the front of this quadcopter. Before we start we need to assume a few things. One of the first things is, is that you're making sure that you're using the same firmware version on both the receiver and the transmitter. So this version is using 1.48 and so is the transmitter. To find that out, plug your receiver in and your transmitter in using a USB, click the appropriate uh, component down there and all you do is you click read settings and in this instance we can see that we're using 1.48 and also really important is make sure that you've got the frequency banding set on the receiver and the transmitter to the same one um, if it's not you'll have some serious issues the other thing to do just to make life easier is to bind the receiver is I always bind it in immersion tools. You turn the transmitter on um, in, in bind mode, it says how to do it on the back of the UHF transmitter. When it's in bind mode um, with the USB plugged in, you can click bind there and it will bind your receiver to the transmitter that's in bind mode at the time. Just a quick note on updating the firmware. To update the firmware, you need to make sure that when you plug the USB in, you press the button on the uh, receiver and then attach to the USB port. And it also gives similar instructions at that point how to connect the transmitter as well. When you've done that, that'll turn white, the text there, and you can press it, um, which will then let you update the firmware. And once again, make sure the firmware is the same on the transmitter and the receiver. Right, this is a bit where we set our MUXT channel. And in this instance, all we need to do is we need to click once again, read settings from receiver, and it'll bring up the settings, what you've got on a servo output here. Now, what I've done is I've set it for channel eight for the PPM MUX setting there. The reason I've done that is basically because channel eight is next to pin one on my TBS discovery, and it just looks a little bit neater. Once you've selected your channel on there, make sure you click Upload Settings to Receiver. Once you've done that, those settings will be saved on your receiver. A couple of handy hints while using the Turnit G9XR while using Easy UHF. Um, one of the things that you do need to do to make sure that it turns on correctly is to go down onto the radio setup menu, which involves holding down the left cursor. When you scroll down it, what you will find is one that says splash screen um, and that's the screen that comes on just here when the radio turns on turn that off it just it takes a second to come on and what that can also do it can just stop the easy uhf from uh, from booting up and cause some issues there switch warning i have off um but i do have throttle warning on um obviously you don't really want your throttle on in case a model starts up or, or something like that just for a safety reason really um, and that's that on the first screen the next screen we need to go to is this one and that's by holding the right case key down so screen 1 of 11 if we go down that what I have also done this is for the TBS it's a really good little function of the 9x size you can put a beep when, it, when a certain channel is uh, centered. So I've done throttle, and then one, two, three, which are the pots up at the top. So when my throttle goes to center, it beeps. And likewise, these pots, when they go to center, they beep as well. The reason I've done that is with the NASA, at half throttle and sticks in the center, we GPS, it should be really locked into the sky there. Really handy little function, that. Um, the next screen we need to go to is across to here. Now the mixer, you can see how I've set this up for my PPN channels. Um, channel number one 
is aileron, channel 2, elevator, channel 3 is throttle, channel 4 is rudder. Channel 5, 100% full gear. Channel 6 is P3, and as I mentioned earlier, channel 6 is the gimbal controller. And channel 7, I've set that up for the three-way switch, and if we just scroll down a little bit, you can see how I set it up. So 100% and then half ID1 and then 100% full ID2 and to change those just hold down the menu button when you've got them selected and you can go in and, uh, and change those. I'm really happy that this light's going on and off all the time as well. Maybe I should have changed that. So going into the next screen into the limit screen um, in fact if we go into this screen first reverse I have reversed channel 7 and then you can see on channel 7 how I've got minus 5.7 72 and 62 there um, and there are the limits for, for the switches on the three-way switch so in the middle we've got attitude mode we've got GPS mode and then we've got fail safe or whatever you want to set it to so GPS mode attitude mode and fail safe in the NASA which is return to home so that's how we do that one last thing you want to do with an INX and the easy UHF is set a fail safe um, for the actual UHF in case we lose signal and the way we're going to do that is simply pop the radio into return to home center sticks half throttle center there so it'll be in a hover mode and then what you need to do is we need to push at the back it says setting fail safe. Press the fail safe bind button for two seconds. So you hold that down with the receiver turned on. And that's the fail safe set. Now, hopefully, with it being center sticks and that in return to home or the NASA fail safe mode, you should get a quadcopter coming back, or at least most of the way back, um, if indeed you lose your radio signal. Um, another bit of good practice I found is if it does start going into failsafe is that you flick that into failsafe as well and then at least you know if it does get a radio signal you are in failsafe so the, the aircraft is going to come home to you regardless.